Hello. <laughs> okay, I'm Paddy Smith. And yes, you are correct. Those are pink flares. And I'm also disabled. I know, shocker. Should I be fixed? That's a loaded term, right? It implies something is broken. I was born with cerebral palsy, which basically means in layman's terms, the signal from my head to my legs is slightly off and basically walk like this. But don't worry, I can still drop on that dance floor when push comes to shove. Ever since I can remember, society and my family have wanted to fix me. Why don't you fix yourself, Paddy? Why don't you want to get fixed, Paddy? But even if I could be fixed, what do I even want to be? But before we get all deep and existential on this, I need to figure out what the options on the table actually are for me. Like, can I even be fixed? So I've come to speak with Sarah Palsy expert, Valerie Stevenson. I'm gonna just kick it off and go straight in the deep end. Is there a cure for cerebral palsy? The short answer to that is no, there is no cure. Cerebral palsy is a kind of umbrella term for any injury to the developing brain. And we know that that can happen up till the age of about two. It affects the way the body develops. So it affects the way your bones grow, your muscles grow. And at the moment, we don't have any way of reversing that. So for me, even if you eradicated the brain injury, I would still walk like I walk now. You would, yeah. But, you know, what are the treatments available to me as an adult? So Botox is a good example. So botulinum toxin injections into the muscles. Sometimes we even implant um, pumps into people with cerebral palsy that delivers drugs into their spine to relax the legs and to help them with movement. Wow. Sometimes we do brain surgery, so we might stimulate parts of the brain to dampen down involuntary movements. So I've been toying with the idea of, should I be fixed? It's about you wanting to know whether you change who you are. And I think that's something you have to answer. And I don't think anybody in the medical profession can help you with that question. Okay, so there's no cure. But there are a load of treatments that can help people like myself with cerebral palsy. So, I'm sure you're all wondering why not just do it then? And yes, logically, if there was a treatment that could guarantee that I could walk without my crutches, of course I'd take that. But there isn't. They're all hopeful. But there's also an emotional part of my brain that says no because I've worked so hard to actually accept and love this part of myself which has been really difficult. So much of my identity is intertwined in my cerebral palsy. How I view the world, how the world interacts with me is all through the prism of this disability. So for me, it's really not as easy as it sounds. So to get out of my head and to get a different perspective, I'm gonna meet with Jennifer McShane, who also has cerebral palsy. Hi, Jen, how are you? Hi. If there was a scientific advance today that would give you the cure, would you take it? I'm actually an identical twin. Uh, her name is Lucy oh and gosh. she doesn't have cerebral palsy. When I have the harder days, I can look next to me and think, whoa, this is what it would have been like if I didn't have cerebral palsy. Wow. And that is that for me is, is difficult. It's nobody's fault. There are many wonderful things about being a twin and that's yeah. one of the harder Parts of it that I would say, though, I adore Lucy. She's my best friend. There is kind of a catch-22 of having this condition. You can only get, like, you know, a lot of treatments when you're younger. And when you get to a certain age, you're kind of done. It is exactly a catch-22 because by the time you reach the age where you might see the after effects of some of the harder surgeries, mm. it's kind of too late then. You've left it too late to say, I would or I wouldn't get this. Hat. Yeah, we're past the sell by date one. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> so I would say that the the pressure is really on your family and your parents because they have to make these life changing decisions for you, their child. Some people are going to be looking at this and thinking about us too and saying, "But if there are treatments out there that may be able to help us, why wouldn't we take them?" Now, on the surface, yes, there's this treatment that can improve your life why wouldn't you do it but no one is a crystal ball and also you get your hopes up i went through you a time when i was young where i thought one particular surgery was just going to take it all away 
wake up and your legs would be straight. Yeah, and perfect. it was on my feet. I improved, but I wasn't that different. So there's a psychological effect of you know, I once thought I was going to be Forrest Gump. One day I'll run down the road and run away from the bullies and my legs will be yours. <laughs> it isn't ever going to take it away. That's yeah. the thing. And I think there's a certain there's a certain peace to be made as you get older. You think, okay, is this as good as I'm going to be? And hoping to maintain that. I'm trying to accept me for who I am. You know, you giving me this window of hope is is pushing me against that rather than helping me accept this is my this is my life. I don't think there's an easy yes or no answer to that. I think you have to weigh it up. You have to weigh where you are in your life. Well, hence why we're doing this documentary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, it's been great talking to you, Thank and I'm you. still none the wiser. But I love hearing <laughs> your story. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> While I'm here wrestling with the idea of would I choose to do it, it's not just about me, is it? Because in many cases, it's the family member or parents that will have to make these life-altering choices for their children. So I've decided to go back to my sister, who's 18 years my senior, and been around from the beginning. Okay, so Val, this is going to be an interesting conversation. I don't think we've ever had a conversation like this before, ever. Never. I'm intrigued, actually. <laughs> I'm actually nervous. So... What did the family and yourself feel when you heard I had through Holy? You just feel that, why us? And that was the why thing us? mom used to say, why my child? She touched whatever she did in her body, yeah. made you like that. Wow. And that, and that was it. She was like, what did I do wrong during the pregnancy? Was it me? Jeez, I never even thought about that. That's really tough. We went down a long road with you, Patrick. To be honest with you, we weren't given um, positive feedback from anybody that we spoke to. So I'm going to get upset now about that. <laughs> so but it was nice, very but... upsetting because, I mean, here's this little guy, you know, and you're full of jest, full of life. And, and you could see by it that you wanted to, you wanted to be more. But there was a th an element of us saying he can be fixed. We know now it's not about fixing someone. It's about developing them to have a better life. It's only because I've seen how you have developed as a person that there is always a door to be opened and there's a light at the end of each tunnel for anybody who has any type of disability whether it be very small or quite large yes. Jeez, I, I've, we've never spoke about this and I actually I know, feel, actually, a, I feel a bit I find emotional. it hard to talk to you about um, this because this is something I kept blocked from you it wasn't easy it wasn't an easy road and you weren't an easy kid neither <laughs> thanks very much personality. <laughs> Well, no, I don't, in a good way, you were strong. But look at you, that's how it, you, 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 you're, you moved in your life because you're so strong like that. After all you've been through, and you've been through a lot. You know, it makes me emotional to think that my mum thought she made me like this. Yeah. But I think this like crux of a question comes from dad really wanting to f have such an innate need to fix me. He did, and know? that would have been an argument between mum and and Patty, like she was taught you he was too hard on you. He thought she was too soft on you. He won't he, he, he won't um, be anything if you don't push him. And she was like, well, if you keep pushing him too far, he's going to break. And I think you brought the balance to them because of your determined personality. And nobody knew where you came from with that attitude. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm getting the most now. I don't know. Like, jeez. Uh, yeah, I can't even look at you. It's hard because I have I to hold back the tears. I can't even well. look at you at the minute. <laughs> but I will say one thing. I know mum and dad are looking down and they are very proud of you. Throughout this journey, like I figured out there are treatments that could potentially help me. But I'm not even sure if I if I want those yet. And I, and I know that sounds probably weird to you, or does it? I wouldn't push you to go and get treatments, if I'm to be honest, because I'd be afraid there might be a setback. If my cerebral palsy was more severe, maybe I'd look at a difference. Yeah. That was heavy, wasn't it? I mean, I don't know how I feel, to be honest. So, do I think I should be fixed? The answer for me is no. Would I feel differently if my circumstances were different? Probably yes because it's a very personal question to ask yourself you can apply should i be fixed to many aspects and labels that society puts on us in life so i think it's an important question to ask yourself is it you who wants to be fixed or is it societal expectations because if we can answer that question then we can answer if we need to be fixed at all
You didn't think I'd get that deep, did you? 